I am Brother Matthew. Thank you for tuning in once again. He will lift up Jesus Delivered by our General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. And I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You'll find in that verse 10, it talks about the new man. If there's anything we should be talking about in this new year, it's the new man. The new man with a new name. That's the subject we're looking at today, the new man with a new name. Look at that verse 10 again. And I put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Well, that's something there. The new man is a recreated man. Look at verse 11. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all in all. Well, that's something there. The new man is someone who has been touched by Christ, transformed by Christ, translated by Christ, transfigured by Christ, conformed unto Christ. Christ is the very foundation and the center of life, of the life of the new man. In verse 12, put on therefore. Therefore, because you are now a new man, a new creature, because you are now a recreated person transformed by the Lord, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, by words of mercies, Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. There we see the virtues of the new man. That the new man has virtue. And those virtues are repeated over there. Holy, beloved, kindness, merciful, humble, and also meek and long suffering. Verse 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgive you, so do ye. So, so do ye. That means then that the new man is the one that has the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ, and he manifests forbearance and forgiveness. In verse 14, and above all these things, put on charity. Wear charity and love like a garment. Put on charity like you put on your clothes. And let charity be seen all over you in your action, in your operation, everything that you do, because you put it on above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection, perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your heart. Charity on the outside and peace on the inside. The new man is a peaceful man. There's no turmoil within. There's no conflict within. There's no confusion within. There's no raging wave within. The new man has peace within. He's a peace-loving person. And he also makes the peace flow to all the people. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye yeah, are called in one body. And be ye thankful. And let the word of Christ... Dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admission one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. The new man is a person that is filled with the scripture. The new man is a person that is admonishing other people. The new man is singing, singing spiritual songs, not only songs, singing with grace in the heart. Not singing with anger. And it says you are singing with grace to the Lord in your heart. You do it to the Lord. And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, 
giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. The new man is a person that looks at everything he does and he says, because I'm new, a new man, with a new name, with a new life, whatsoever I do will have that stamp of newness. Verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is speech in the Lord. The new man is a submissive man. The new woman is a submissive woman. The submission at home. And it is that kind of lifestyle in the family. Submission of the wife to the husband. And the love of the husband for the wife. That shows clearly that something has happened. The new birth has taken place. A regeneration has occurred. There is salvation. And there is the new birth with eternal life. Husband said, verse 19, Love your wives and be not bitter against them. That's the new man. The new man loves his wife beyond and above any other woman on earth. And in verse 20, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Obey your parents in all things. That's the newness of life. That's what shows we are born again. That if children are born again and they become new children too, they will obey their parents in all things. Not in some things and not in the major things. Everything. But this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Lest they be discouraged. Fathers, if we're new, we're not going to provoke our children or anyone. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. In our places of work, between us and our managers, our directors, and the people who are leading us, between us, the students and their teachers and their principals, there's going to be that obedience and that submission to authority. If we have real newness of life in the church between the members and our leaders, the members and the coordinators, the coordinators and the group coordinators and the whole church and the pastor. It's going to be that obedience. It is the evidence of the new life. Servants obey in all things. Your masters, according to the flesh, not with high service as men please us, but your singleness of heart, doing what? Fearing God. That's the newness in verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it utterly as unto the Lord, not unto men. I'm looking at Isaiah chapter 62. Isaiah chapter 62. The new man with a new name. The new man with a new name. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake, Will I not hold my peace? And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as the brightness and the salvation thereof as a new lamb that burneth. The Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by, tell me aloud, by a new name. This new year, a new man. This new year, a new name. And it says, Thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hands of the Lord. When that new name comes from the Lord, it makes you to have the crown of glory in the Lord and a royal diadem in the hands of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah. That means my pleasure. The Lord is going to say you are my delight and you are my pleasure because there is a new man with a new name. And then it says, and thy land Beulah, that means marriage. Thy land builder, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Look at verse 5, as a young man marrieth a virgin. So shall thy sons marry thee, and 
as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over you this year. I have set watchmen upon thy walls of Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. Proclaim the message. Declare the message. Spread it abroad. You're a new man with a new name. And the Lord says you are Ephesia. And he has delight and pleasure in you. And you'll be so united to you as the bride is united to the bridegroom. And he says you have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. Let the delight and the mercy, the compassion, the joy of the Lord be your strength. And then go out this year and go and succeed. And let the pleasure of the Lord, the glory of the Lord shine upon your life. Then it says that you give him no rest in verse 7. Till establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Till this church shall become glory, glorious. And he prays in the earth that you'll not keep quiet. In verse 8, the Lord has sworn by his right hand. And by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn for meat to thine enemies. Yeah. That the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine. Yeah. For the which thou hast labored. This year, you will enjoy the work of your hand. Yeah. Enemies will not take whatever belongs to you. And when you come to the church, you come to retreat, you come to a conference or anywhere, your property will be totally preserved. Verse 9, for they that have gathered each shall eat it. And praise the Lord, they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Cast off, cast off. The highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. This year we're lifting up the standard. In every family we'll raise up the standard. In every district church we're going to raise up the standard. In the central church and the headquarters we're going to raise up the standard. In every family and every community we're going to raise up the standard. And the standard that is broken down. It is time, and it is this year, it will be stopped in Jesus' name. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed unto the edge of the world, say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, the salvation cometh. Behold, the reward is with him, and his walk before him. They shall call them, this is our name, the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. As we look at the scriptures this Sunday on the new man with a new name. The new man with a new name. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the new name of the new man. The new name of the new man. And God says that in this new year, He wants to do something new in our lives. And because of that, he even has to change our names. Your names are changed. No more failure but success. No more sadness but joy. Happiness in Jesus' name. No more barren but you are fruitful. No more poor but you are prospered. Because this year there is a new man. There is a new man. Where is that new man now today? Oh, you are there. I see you. And then, you have a new name. Yeah. I said you have a new name. Yeah. And you'll see that blessing upon your life in Jesus' name. Point number one, the new name with of the new man. Point number two, the new nature of the new man. The new nature of the new man. Number three, the new nation of the new man. The new nation of the new man. Number one, the new name. Number two, the new nature. Number three, the new nation. Let's come back to this um, passage in Isaiah chapter 62. 
Isaiah chapter 62. I'm reading to you from verse 2. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. The new name of the new man. What name is that? Let Isaiah tell us. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 26. And I will restore thy judges as at the first, and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. That's the new name. The city of righteousness. That means that the whole church will be referred to as the community of righteousness. As a city of righteousness. As a nation of righteousness. Which means then every member will have this new name. Righteousness. And then it says the faithful city. Which means everyone then has this new name. Which is righteousness and faithfulness. We're looking at chapter 4 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 3. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy. That's a new name. Shall be called holy. Even everyone that is reaching among the living in Jerusalem. That means that this year you will not be called backslider. You will not be called sinner. You will be called holy. Everyone that is reaching among the living. Thank God that is you. Look at verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the fields of the daughters of Zion. And shall purge the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof. By the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. You see the new name the Lord is calling us. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. Isaiah 58 verse 12. A new name. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 12. And they shall be, and they that be of thee, they, sh they that shall be of thee, shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the bridge, the restorer of paths to dwell in. This year, you will not be a destroyer. You will be a repairer, and you will be a restorer. You see, that's the new name the Lord is calling us. It's saying, all those people are called by my name. They are there to repair. They are there to restore. And they are there to restore my glory unto the land. They are there to repair whatever is broken down. You'll be a repairer. You'll be a restorer in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 14. The new name by which we are called. We're looking at Isaiah.